Well, good morning. morning. Welcome to North Madison Congregational Church, United Church of Christ here in beautiful Madison, Connecticut. It's wonderful to be here with you this Sunday. Um, We have a tradition that we began acknowledging, at least in uh, COVID time, of making a mistake every Sunday in worship, but a different one each time. And um, so we are in keeping with that tradition and I am not live on Facebook because I can't figure out something that Zoom is doing weird this morning. So um, I'm going to ignore you all for a minute and work on that. Um, But before I do, I just want to say I'm Heather Arkovich. I have the gift of being pastor of this fine congregation of ministers because we do believe very much here in the ministry of all the baptized and that means everyone. And so today we celebrate that ministry. This is our I'm going to see if I can say it. This is our um, fiscal finale, fa la 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 follies Sunday. And so we have some special things happening, some wonderful special music, some mm, beautiful words from some of our members about what it means to be part of our congregation and how we value this and one another, and the shoulders we stand on and the future we hold together. We have a new screen in the sanctuary. So uh, we're very excited and thank you to our anonymous donors. You know who you are. And we might need a few more anonymous donors for the way ahead because we think we have finally figured out the sound problem for uh, Zoom. And so we will, before Christmas Eve, have that all addressed, hopefully, hopefully. And the sound will be beautiful when the music plays for Christmas Eve. So online people, keep the faith. Uh, We're working on it. And um, our, our pageant will be a virtual video this year again. So we'll have all the farm animals and all the things, um, but it'll be up on our screen, hopefully. And the sound will be great, hopefully. So um, thank you to all of you for your openness to new technology and uh, trying new things in all the ways we do. So I would like to introduce, I have behind me our virtual, our junior deacon, Ava, and our not so junior deacon, Peter. <laughs> who will be leading us this morning. We have Linda, our maven of music on high in the balcony. We have um, a special children's sermon offerer today is Ryan, who will be reading us our children's story. And Ellie and Grace will be sharing some thoughts about church for us. We're very excited. And uh, Mike and Kate have written a special song and they will be talking with us. And John McDaniel has sent a song that we'll be experiencing virtually. And Jen, and Rhonda from a church office are here on a Sunday (laughs) and uh, may have even brought some family I see and they will be lighting our third advent candle the candle for joy the candle for Mary and I see we have some other friends in the back hi friends we haven't seen in a while so welcome to worship here in North Madison where we say whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey you are welcome and we're so glad to have you so let us be in a spirit of worship together And here's our deacon. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to worship. It is wonderful to be with you here today, live virtually and in person in a sanctuary this morning. All music is used with permission from one license, number 738. 900-A. There are offering plates at the entrances to receive our free will offering, your 2022 pledge cards. You also make an offering virtually or by mail. Thank you. And I know I'll talk about it later, but uh, you can also put in your poinsettia forms into the offering plates. Our COVID Guidelines, our presence here indicates our acceptance of our COVID safety guidelines. Please ensure social distancing, that your mask is worn securely over both your mouth and your nose. Please be sure to fill out the clipboard in your pew for tracking should we need to reach out to you. And now transitioning to worship, we're so glad to have you all here with us this morning. Your presence enriches our time together 
I hope worship will be meaningful and inspiring to you and connect you more deeply with your own heart, one another, and with our creator. And now I give you Ava. Loving God of all, on this Thursday, Sunday of Advent, we have gathered again in this sacred place, seeking the joy that your son's birth brings. Some of us are here for the first time, some gathered in generations. Some are in, the person, are in person in our sanctuary. Some are gathered virtually on screens and close in our heart. Th thank you for welcoming us all home. In this moment, gathered together, we tune our hearts for you. All of us will all of us safe in your arms. As we worship you this morning, we may create here in all the ways we are here, a circle of love ever expanding, ever growing, a place of wisdom, a place of connection, a place of hope and grace. We may, and may we know that you who gather us are among us and within us and between us. Emmanuel, God is with us as we worship, share our joy, and grow together. Amen. Amen. Well, now I'd like to invite Jackie and Rhonda forward. For those of you who do not know Jackie and Rhonda, they run the office and do the funny stuff. All the things behind the scenes that make it happen in our church. So. Today, as we light the third Advent candle for joy, as administrators, we know how easy it is to get caught up in the details, in the busyness of the church and life and tasks, and how easy the whole point of what we are doing, of, of how easily the whole point of what we are doing and who we are to doing, together doing it can be lost when we do. Advent is a season for remembering who and whose we are and for turning ourselves again to find the miraculous in the ordinary. As we light this third Advent candle, the candle for joy, we remember Mary, the mother of Jesus, who surely wrestled with the extraordinary being born in the midst of the ordinary. In the words of Sister Joan Starrell, CSJ, what if there were no angel for the woman, no heavenly figure, with wings, that is. What if the only angel was the one within her, that mysterious angel of belief, whereby she knew slowly and darkly at first, then surely that the child growing in her womb was the son of God? And what if there were no angel for the man either, except the angel within the woman trying to tell him that she was a chaste woman with child? And the child was the son of God? Is the angel less for appearing in the person? Is faith less because we must place it in each other? May we all know we are cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and swaddled in God's love in this season and always. And as the Sufi poet Rumi prayed, let the beauty we love be what we do. Let it spill forth from us in joy. There are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss what is holy. Thank you. Should we do a moment? <laughs> And I invite our choir forward now. What are we singing? Ah, to sing of us, to sing to us of Emmanuel, God with us.
The video is not on display.
So this is the time in our service where we've come to center ourselves. And um, we began this during our virtual season with a candle that we would watch up close on screen. So those who are home see our Advent candles in preparation for the video to come. And we are here, I invite you as some of you have already done to settle yourselves in your body, feel the pew beneath you, feel the weight of your body and what's supporting it and take a deep holy breath in of this Sabbath space. Breathe in God's light and breathe out everything else. Breathe in the Sabbath air and presence and let it fill you and exhale everything else. We are in Sabbath time now. The week is behind us. What's done is done. What's undone is undone. Let it be. And now continue at your own pace to breathe in God's light. Let it fill you to every part of your body, every cell, every thought. And exhale all the stuff of the week, everything that got in the way, the busyness the heaviness, the doubts, the fears, the worries. Just keep at your own pace, breathing in God's light and releasing everything that puts a shadow across that light within you. We are here enveloped in God's presence, rooted in God's love, reaching upwards into God's light. On this Sunday, when we remember Mary, we remember that often Mary is portrayed as a rose. And we reflect on a rose, imagining the stem of the rose to be our body, the roots of the rose to be our roots, and the buds of the rose to be buds upon each of us the places where God has us growing, the places where God would have us bloom. Where are the places in your life this Advent Sunday where God is calling you to new growth? To have buds is beautiful but to have buds is also vulnerable. Imagine the feeling the first time a bud prepares to open itself, to go from tightly held and safe and strong to gently, bravely opening in all your beautiful vulnerability. To bloom is to be vulnerable but to bloom is also to receive the sun, the warmth of its light, the beauty of the quenching dews upon yourself, deep into you. So imagine yourself blooming if you're not already. Imagine God's loving gaze upon your beauty as you do and know that you are held as was Mary held, and that you also are called to birth forth God's son, as was she, to birth forth faithfully and bravely and gently and lovingly God's presence in your heart and in this world. May it be so. Amen.
Jesse's lineage coming as men of old have sung. It came a floweret bright amid the cold of winter when half spent. Now I'd like to invite Ellie and Grace, who are two of our youngest but most enthusiastic members, and they have been um, helping us throughout this. Oh, speaking of enthusiasm, you just can't hold our choir back. <laughs> Well, just ignore them for now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ellie and Grace, you can go over here to the microphone over here. They have been singing for us and speaking to us and doing all sorts of things for us this whole time. And we have loved every minute of all of your sharing. So, thank you. And you can take off your masks and tell us what you'd like us to know. So, thank you. And maybe you should introduce each one of you so that people know which of you is which they don't know you are. Ellie Grace. <laughs> and MCC is Love and Hope. In church school, we were playing a game that I didn't like, and this year came out of the game to play with me, even though no one else was. That made me feel loved. Uh, Ellie, can you say it one more time? And I'm going to fix this microphone because it's not working for you. <laughs> I'm going to pick you up. Is that okay if I pick you up? Yeah. Okay. All right, you ready? Oh, okay. In church school, we were playing a game that I didn't like, and Miss Sue came out of the game to play with me, even though no one else was. That made me feel loved. Huh. I think this was see, whenever we were making gingerbread houses, it made me feel happy <clears throat> to use my imagination and to work with candy. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I hear the choir singing, it also makes me feel happy. Our church makes me feel grateful. Oh, thank you, Ellie.
what NMCC means to me. To me, church is a place where I can be myself and where no one judges me for who I am or who I want to be. NMCC has always taught me to be a better person and is constantly shaping the way I talk to people and act in life. When the choir sings, it makes my worries slip away like they could, even though I know they can't. It is a place where there are kind people who are there for me and always want to talk to me. It reminds me of the invisible string of love because the string of love is soft and strong like the community in my church. There are, they always have my back and also they put me in a happy mood when I am down. My church is constantly, sh my church constantly shapes the way I act and talk to people because they are so moving. They are teaching me about Jesus and his followers and I'm really glad they are because I'm a better person because of that. Thank you for being a happy part of my life. Thank you, girls. And you know, you are a happy part of our lives. I mean, how cool is it to be part of a congregation where we get to hang out with these two? <laughs> Pretty cool. And so now we've gone from some of our youngest, most enthusiastic members to, I'm not gonna say some of our oldest, <laughs> but to some of our most established, shall we say, and Kate and Mike, who have also been bringing us wonderful music throughout this pandemic, have a little something special to share for us this morning. So here they are. And you can probably figure out who's Kate and who's Mike without my telling you. So. Mike, Kate. <laughs> so if you know anything about bluegrass music, you'll know that the banjo player is usually the brunt of all the jokes. And if you've attended church long enough, you'll know that everyone's favorite talk is on budgets and fundraisings, right? <laughs> well, you're in for a real double treat today because we're going to attempt to combine the two. A little banjo music. Isn't that from Deliverance? <laughs> not now, not now. Uh, later, later, okay. We're gonna combine a little banjo music with why we love and support the church. How we combine the two will be an amazing feat and it will be revealed in time, so stay tuned. Mike, would you like to go first? Sure. No, I meant tell them oh. why you love and support the church. Okay. So Sorry, either. I get carried away. <laughs> Nothing like, uh, you know, coming after beautiful meditative music with a banjo, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to give a little statement. Many years ago, a friend of ours suggested that we check out North Madison Congregational Church because there was a wonderful minister and a great community of people. To be honest, Kate was more inclined to join than I was because it had a beautiful choir and she was interested in joining it. I, being an ex-Catholic, wasn't interested in attending any more organized religions or services and I wasn't sold on the idea. Kate convinced me at, to at least attend a few services and I cautiously decided to check it out. I wasn't prepared for the impact of this church. I was overwhelmed with a feeling of love and kindness. I began to learn that the community was the church and the spirit of acceptance was the point of being part of it. I also came to realize that the active humanitarian work the church was doing in the community was a great vehicle to help others. We all want to help others. It's part of our nature. Working through this church with our financial support enables all of us to spread the love and kindness well beyond the walls of this church. So please consider giving as much as you can afford so we can give to others. So the warm community here is one of the reasons I love the church too. Having been members for more than 20 years, we feel a sense of history and longevity here. We've celebrated weddings, ours among them, and baptisms, but also mourn the loss of way too many friends. 
We've helped and been helped through difficult illnesses and tragedies in ways that only a close family can. And there's a sense of camaraderie, camaraderie and common purpose when we work together on projects and programs. And like a family, if there are disagreements or trespass, with God's grace, we seek ways to heal, rebuild bridges, and move forward. In participating in learning more deeply what God is, we reflect and turn inspiration to action. And there needs to continue to be such a place we can turn to for that kind of renewal and spiritual growth. We choose to support the church as best we are able because we believe it's important to hold a place in the larger community where we can trust that the truth will be spoken or at least reached for. With so much confusion in the world today where conspiracy theories abound and science is ignored, we have to keep a flag planted where something more honest and enduring is valued. In addition, I have particularly always taken to heart our congregational heritage and structure, where we are run not from the top down, but from the consensus of all of us as a kind of microcosm of democracy. It's no secret that our democracy has been endangered of late when voting rights are under attack and less than one year ago, Congress itself was under siege. So now it seems all the more important to keep this little democratic congregation-centered church at the circle alive and well. When I grew up, my parents referred to the annual finance campaign as stewardship, and I've always liked that term. According to Oxford, stewardship is taking care of an organization, property, or household. And just as we're called to be stewards of the earth, we need to be stewards of our church caretakers, pledging our support. First Corinthians 4 says, let us be considered as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. And isn't it a mystery that when we give without heed to what we gain, time and the great spirit have a way of turning and gifting us back all that we need. Personally, as Mike said, singing in the choir is a large part of what holds meaning for me here. The brilliantly chosen musical offerings often transport me to a deeper place. And even when rehearsal is rough, the music somehow always comes together on Sunday morning. Another lovely mystery. <laughs> right? So after our COVID challenges and some of them still ongoing, we especially need you to give back now. If you've not already pledged your regular donation to the church, we ask you to prayerfully consider doing so. Like any household, we need to be able to budget how much we can afford based on how much we will take in. So if you've been on the fence, we hope you'll fill out a pledge card before you go. You can find these white cards in the pew pockets or at the back of the church or raise your hand and one will be brought to you. Pledging will not only help us keep the lights on, ensure that our church life and programs need to be healthy and enriching. Your stewardship will help us endure as a vital anchor in our community, one of truth and spiritual growth, and perhaps a little beacon of democracy amid God's mysteries. <laughs> and now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, the dazzling finale, <laughs> when we bring together two seemingly divergent aspects of our presentation. So here's a little jingle from our Shameless Commerce Division. It wouldn't be a song without banjo tuning, right? <laughs> Oh, won't you please give to the church, give to the church, dig down deep in your heart and search for what we hope will be the right number of what you can give to the church. 
So here's the point. Oh, oh here's the point. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Don't be shy or on your guard. Put a dollar sign by that number and, and fill, fill in that small white card. And with some luck, and with some luck, oh, don't you know, and don't you know, we hope you'll pledge your dough, and, and the higher that number, the more our church can grow, the more our church can grow. Amazing. Yeah, sing it again. Sing it again. There are pledge cards on the clipboards in your pews, so when you're filling those out with who you're sitting near, that's a good time to do that if you'd like. And Ryan is ready to provide us our children's story. So come on, Ryan. Thanks, friends. Wow. How about that? All right. Perfect. So I'm going to read you guys. It's a tough act to follow, right? So I'm going to read you a really good story about generosity. It's called Those Shoes. I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here, just need, Grandma says. And what you need are new boots for winter. School in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I, always, I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate came to, uh, comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. <laughs> Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair. Then one day in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size. Velcro, like the one my cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. <laughs> when I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at Mr. Alfrey's shoes and laughs. And so do Terrence, Brandon T., and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about any dumb shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like those shoes. And my grip is so tight on the pencil, I think it might burst. One Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little money set aside. May, might be enough. You never know. At the store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop, not a pair of those in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. The black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50. Those shoes. My heart is pounding hard. I take off my shoes, hitch up my baggy socks, 
How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shoved my foot into the first row, curling my toes to get the heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. <laughs> Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for the toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says, I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that the shoes will fall right off then and there. Oh, my toes will fall off right then and there, but my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money, and I squeeze them on and limp to the school bus stop. At home, a few days later, Grandma put, puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Grandma gives me a big hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfreys to school every day. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped, and his, feel look, uh, his feet look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there, the only kid who did not laugh at Mr. Alfrey's shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape of Antonio's shoes smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think, I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to another. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what, Antonio says, breathing hard. Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you didn't wear them, Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try my shoes one last time. Before I can change my mind, my shoes are in my coat. The snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell and run. Sorry, I haven't been showing it. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at Mr. Alfred's shoes. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your bo uh, boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. I think that's a really good story. Do you think, I'm curious, do you guys think that Jeremy was generous? Yeah, because he took shoes that he really wanted, but they That's right. Do you, were there any other people in the story that were generous? Um, that's right his grandma she was very generous because she took some money that maybe she could have spent on something else and wanted to give it to jeremy anyone else mr alfrey right giving shoes you know giving those those shoes no, that's okay you don't have to do it you can just hold it there what why do you think jeremy said i will not do it remember in the story he kept saying i will not do it what do you what, what do you think why do you think he said he wouldn't do it You have any thoughts? Not sure. Anyone else? Go ahead, Grace. He said he wouldn't do it. He didn't do it because he wouldn't give the chance to um, Antonio because he wanted to keep them maybe because maybe he would shrink. Because he said That's right. Sometimes it can be really hard to be generous. And sometimes maybe when you give something to your generous, you feel really good. And sometimes maybe you don't. That's okay, too. Jeremy uh, gave a gift that you can like hold and that you can see, but can you think of some other gifts, you know, that were in that story that maybe you can't hold or see that people gave? What's it, Grace? Love. Love. Yeah. Grandma, get, what's that? Friendship. Friendship. You're right. Those are a couple of things that you can give. Like, so uh, Jeremy's grandma gave him like a big hug, right? And, um, and, you know, Antonio, you know, uh, Antonio and Jeremy became friends and they gave the gift of friendship and they were racing together. 
So I encourage you guys, can you guys think of any examples of, you know, things that happen here in church where people are generous? What do you say, Grace? Um, well, we usually, um, whenever someone, like, let's just say doesn't have a mask or their mask is broken, we usually um, say, well, I have an extra mask or we can call it. That's right. You're right. Anything else? Yeah. The Columbus House, right? So we give things. We're making donations, you know, to the Columbus House. I think about like, you know, something that I just heard with, you know, some, some great music, right, from the choir. And a lot of the choir, you know, give their time to learn that music when they could be doing something else. I'm sure Mr. Tom back there would love to be thumbing through the latest Home Depot ad and picking out his new drill, but he doesn't <laughs> do that. He spends time learning a new song so that we could all enjoy it, right? So I encourage you guys to really think about some of the things that you can give or be generous with, whether it's something that you could hold or see, or maybe something that you can't, whether that's to, you know, your parents or to teachers or just people in this church. Thank you. After that, I will do. Thank you. 
Okay, now they're part of us again. <laughs> <laughs> you are part of us <laughs> out there. You're part of the family and we love you. <laughs> it is love. It's love that draws us all together. And on this Advent Sunday of joy, we are celebrating generosity and prayerful pledges that have come in and that will come in. And we are celebrating being together, being a church. What makes it even more joyful is to remember how it's been for the last 21 months and how hard things have been and how joyful it is, even though we have some limitations, right? The windows are open, the masks are on, but we love each other and we're here. And so we have lots to celebrate. Four things come to my mind. A particular shout out for four things. One, I wanna give a particular shout out to our fabulous, faithful, and fantastic pastor who has pastored us this whole time. She'd only been here a few months when this whole pandemic started. So, yay, Heather. <laughs> Two, our conscientious and caring and capable church staff. <laughs> we had staff meetings on Zoom, no matter what, and we were all still committed to keeping together. And all of you all of you amazing, amazing people on boards and committees and teams who worked really hard, tirelessly, probably even harder in some ways, behind the scenes to keep everything going, especially last summer when Heather was so gravely ill. Oh my gosh, we pulled together and we stayed connected. And four, oh, I'm gonna give it that one. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Yay. Yay for us, right? And the fourth thing is our wonderful, amazing choir. <laughs> Woohoo! Me too. <laughs> Thanks. In a moment, you are going to sing or hear them sing some wonderful music, more wonderful music. We've already had some, but some more wonderful music. Carol's going to be with me on the piano bench. Oh my gosh, you know, we haven't even been able to be together and we're going to be sitting next to other masked and looking straight ahead <laughs> on the piano bench. You know what? They're just going to come forward out of their seats with their folders in front of them, and they're going to stand up here, and they're going to watch our marvelous Bill, the maestro. Yay, Bill! And that's going to be it. You have to know, from watching the services last year, how wonderful the choir was all year. But you also have to know... <laughs> that that was really a labor of love. Because for every one anthem that you saw on the screen, there were dozens and dozens and dozens, and I'm not joking, of hours that it took to prepare that so that we could have that happy little group of singers on the screen. Just ask any choir member, and they will tell you wonderful stories. <laughs> Of uh, 12 recordings to do one particular one as they're sitting alone in their own living room trying to record the piece and the phone rings, so they have to start again. <laughs> the dog barks, so they have to start again. They make a mistake, so they have to start again. 
the train goes by. <laughs> you have to start again. Um, it was amazing. And then once they recorded and they passed them all over to Scott's Cloud, our angel magician, Scott Chassie. Magic to take all of these and try to put them together and make us sound like a choir, which was no mean feat. You talk to Scott. We even had to hire extra uh, person to do another five hours of work each week to get that nice little anthem, just like you're going to hear us come up and just sing so naturally today. Why were people willing to put up with all of that? Because we are a family. We are a choir family, part of the big church family. We love each other and we would do anything last year to keep us all connected. And all of you out there, a lot of you stepped up way out of your comfort zone and sang Shalom. What an amazing thing couples, families, and some really brave individuals who did it all by themselves. But wasn't it fun to see those different faces every week that we, you know, when we were trapped in our houses and couldn't see anybody and we would see our loved ones on the screen. Importantly, one of the wonderful songs that Grace and Ellie sang last year for us was, I am the church, you are the church. And most important of all, that third line, we are the church together. I thank God today for every single one of you, every single one, and for what each one of you does to contribute to make this the most unique and wonderful church community I've ever been in. Now, choir, let's make some more music together. <laughs> Hallelujah.
And now is the time I get to share the joys and concerns. Our first one, our prayers for our refugee family of 11. Due to arrive just after Christmas, all refugees and all who are working to provide a soft landing of hospitality for those seeking safety in a new home. And now some of the concerns, other concerns. This is from Ingela Prayers for Burke, who in this coming week is, uh, it's a little scary after his third trial, Met chemo. We have prayers heading out for healing for uh, Peggy Connell. From uh, Missy. Prayers for several family members and friends who are dealing with illness. Another prayer for Scott's old friend, Mac Francis, now in the New York hospital with COVID and on a respirator. From Jackie for my son, Austin, who was supposed to return home from college, but was tested positive for COVID and is now in quarantine. From Lynn B, for our friend John in rehab after a serious heart problem. For Adam's dad who's in the late Friday night, his cancer has grown and he's in pain and disoriented. We pray for strength and peace for what is coming next. Also prayers for Janice's friend who had double mastectomy on Friday. She should be home on Monday and the margins look good. Prayers for her lymph nodes are cancer free. So now for some joys. Simply put, joy for Ellie and Grace. <laughs> We have a few birthdays to celebrate, but happy 65th birthday for one of NMCC's friends, the Reverend Mr. Milton Brasher Cunningham. And also, uh, interesting how it happens, but uh, husband and wife, happy birthday to Peter and Kathy Meyer.
and also one other late joy. My mom, Eleanor, had a successful gallbladder surgery this week and will be hopefully now be pain-free after decades. Amen. Let us continue in a spirit of prayer. Holy One, we don't understand it, but you somehow have created this life to hold both the joys and the sorrows. The beauty, and so what can we do but thank you? Especially in this season where we prepare to receive again your child, who we call Emmanuel. God with us. Help us to focus on all that he was to those that he knew in the flesh and those that knew him in the flesh and all of us who have yearned to know him since. Help us to focus on what it is to hold one another, to be swaddled and held in love. Help us to know what it is to cultivate the hospitality in our own hearts, to take the time to cultivate that hospitality with kindness and vulnerability and generosity and trust that when our hearts once opened, receive you, O oh God, our heavenly visitor, we will be able to hold all that you bring. We will be able to take in the life that you offer us. And we will be able to throw open our windows and all our doors to let that light shine forth in a way that welcomes all the travelers on the way. And so, God, today, as we gather with gratitude for our Falalala Follies and our church and you and your son, open us to wonder who in our day needs our shelter, who in our world needs our shelter, and what parts of ourselves can we yet open to receive you and to offer space to receive others? Speak to us, God, in the midst of our prayers, in the midst of our loving, in the midst of our living, in the midst of our preparations to receive your son. Speak to us so we may truly receive him in all the places that you are calling to us to open today. And receiving all the prayers that we've lifted up here aloud and quietly in our hearts, printed in our emails and our Facebook messages, and even those prayers we haven't thought of yet to pray. Hear us, O oh God, as we tune our hearts to you and your love and care, and as we pray together the words your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite our good Christian friends, the choir forward, to sing for us. Good Christian friends, rejoice. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, we have one other few little pieces before we end today, but our annual budget meeting begins next. In just a moment, please stay put. Children's Church is extended for families who wish to stay. It's wonderful that so many of us stay in our seats to enjoy Linda, Linda's postlude. Please be mindful to observe social distancing and so forth. Some of the announcements, uh, just to remind you, we have the offering plates at the back. There's one here, there's one over there. The uh, pew clipboards, as you all know, you can sign your email and your name and so forth. Uh, we have Christmas poinsettia forms that are there. And if you need one, check with me or the ushers. And if you fill them out and wish to, you can place them in the offering plate. Uh, we have Christmas caroling, kids, teens, parents, everyone. Please plan to join us for an annual NMC Christmas caroling next Sunday, December 19th from four to six-ish. Meet at NMCC, grab a hot chocolate and cookies. We'll make our way in your own cars to spread Christmas cheer outside of a few friends' homes. Let Ann Clemens or Sue know. And also there are sign-up sheets. They went around. They went around. We have the book club on Tuesday, January 11th, 7 p.m. We will join in NMC members, Orlean Gallops via Zoom to discuss her new book in plain sight. It is captivating family history, tracing her previous unknown Jewish heritage across 60 plus years and through the Second World War. And now we have a few others to share. Roberta. Okay, December is the month for to collect for Columbus House. The boxes are set up here um, that you can bring in your wrapped gifts. Um, somebody asked me, what if I wanna combine two gifts? It would be great if you could just wrap each gift, gift separately because we have a lot of people to support, we want everyone to have something. If you can create, a, if you have some extra um, greeting cards and you wanna write a note from your family, sign NMCC, that would be really great. They really appreciated those last year. Um, and if you, you can bring them in either during the week in the mornings and someone is in the church will let you in or just if you have things to drop off, you can just drop them off at the, um, at the top of the ramp in the plastic box, but yeah, you know, box. Uh, and uh, the Dunkin' Donut gift cards, you can also, um, we are collecting $10 gift cards for Dunkin' Donuts. So hats, gloves, scarves, and socks are the things that we're collecting for. Thank you. Janet. Hi, Janice from um, Shoreline Interfaith Resettlement. Just wanted to give you guys an update. Um, the house is all set. Um, one of the things we are looking for though, um, well, two things actually are booster seats. If anyone has booster seats, so not car seats because the youngest is five, but there's like booster seats and just check the expiration date on them. As long as they're not expired, we can take them. Um, so just let me know, you can email me or um, text me or whatever if you have them available. Thank you. And Melissa. Melissa Blunden, I have craft fair news, but first I want to thank all of you because you all did give. And uh, it was a very successful. Um, I want to thank my, my, my daughter Meredith in the kitchen and all the kitchen helpers, um, Christine Hopkins. Uh, Linda Young and the Cookies and Roberta with all our communication and Tom, Tom who always keeps us <laughs> together. Yeah, really, I was trying to find the perfect word, but you know. Um, so, and all the cookie elves who baked and wrapped cookies and took money and um, so many of you, the youth, the raffle, um, just amazing. Amazing. It just, you know, it really takes a, a village. It takes a team to bring these things together. And the news you've all been waiting for. So we did raise $5,200. Yeah. And that so far exceeded our expectations. So we did it. You did it. Thank you. Yeah, 
And I believe that's it. We'll turn it over. That's it from me.